But you know from the beginning, the international community, when they were building this TFG, they give them, don't interfere Somalia. Just don't, inter they give, don't inter interfere, interfere Somalia. Yeah. Interfere the affairs of Somalia. Just build your institutions in Somalia. They have that uh, message from the international community. And that's why they are not. But the other day, Somalia is not a country. They are a country because they claim on us. <laughs> and they, that they are, they have been given that they are the legitimate government for Somalia, which sometimes we see as Somalanders. Ironic when we, when we hear that news from the international community. The people who are not putting their house in order to claim that they are, uh, sometimes it, it can be something <coughs> not good to the Somalis. The people who, who are not doing anything will represent the Somali. It's, uh, it become something that we cannot, even to listen is very difficult. That people who are not reconciling by, the, by themselves for 17 years, and sometimes we ask why Somaliland that have been neglected have set up a rule of law in place and functioning state in place. And Somalia that have been supported by the international community have never materialized anything for almost 17 years. It's a question to be answered by the international community. But no secret talks. <laughs> Uh, Colin had a follow-up, and you had a question. You wanted to ask a follow-up? Just, just a quick follow-up. Um, there was an article, I think it was in the Post a couple of months ago, about uh, the Department of Defense um, and an internal debate within the U.S. government about Somaliland, and, and the, the Department of Defense was actually supportive, more supportive of, um, of recognizing Somaliland. And everyone knows the U.S. government is, an, is in a monolith. So do you, do you, do you see different parts within the U.S. government that are more sympathetic, and are, is, there a, is there a strategy to <laughs> I'm aware of run the interagency from the outside? Less, uh, more or less, we met with the State Department, we met <coughs> with the Pentagon, we met different places. I, I see all are sympathetic, but we, at last, we concluded, if we, they showed us that the willingness that they can do something for for us in the future. But we concluded that if there is a will, there is a way. Let them try to sort out a way that they can help us in the future. That was the conclusion that we made. If I, if I, may, if I, may, if I may add to what the President is just saying, that uh, you know, I'm aware, we are aware of the article, of course. You know. I read it as you read early in the morning with the first cup of coffee. It was really good to see that. You know, I mean, it has been a long drought for me here in Washington, <laughs> D.C. <laughs> so, so the issue is just that uh, I would say that, no, there is no division, as a matter of fact. And again, when it comes to the harmonization between the two departments, from what we have seen only, I cannot otherwise say that, particularly on this issue, I think they, you know, the, the, the policies for the Department of State and the feeling seems to be mutual, but we will see where it goes. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I'm Catherine Southwick. I'm from Refugees International. And uh, <coughs> President, I was wondering if you or your colleagues could speak a little bit about, um, well, the fact that you're this uh, sort of an island of peace in a very volatile region. What, is, what are you anticipating in terms of refugee flows into Somaliland? And what is, you know, what is your assessment of Somaliland's willingness and capacity to host these refugee populations, what kind of plans are in place or may, should be in place? It will be very difficult for us to receive uh, refugees. They are in place already. They, have, they, said they came all the way from Odisha. Some came, come from Ethiopia. They are in place. But we cannot receive refugees because to our capacity. Because there are already internally displaced people of our own in place. The, the UNHR brought all our refugees from Djibouti and from Ethiopia, about 800,000, and still they are scattered in the streets. They have no shelter, no houses. 
So it will be very difficult for a country like us to receive uh, refugees. Although we didn't send them out, but we cannot help them. We have time for just one last question, Mr. President, and then we, his schedule requires that we adjourn. My name is Andre Lesage. I'm at the National Defense University. Uh, I was wondering if you could comment on the situation in Somalia and what you see as the prospects for further reconciliation there, the ability of the transitional federal government to broaden its base of support and maybe become more inclusive and stabilize the situation, and if you'd have any advice to give them uh, on their way forward. Uh, I would have given them advice if they like it. <laughs> but. Uh, they didn't need advice because they, they are satisfied with their situation because they are a government who goes to all forums, to the United Nations, to the African Union, to the Arab League, to the Islamic Conference. And I think they are satisfied with this uh, scenario. They, they have been uh, doing this business for the last 17 years. And they never change, uh, make any change on the ground. So I don't think that these people need any advice or they can read between the lines, the process that we are more or less Somalis and we know each other. They know the process that we have made. We, we focus it and address it, our own problems one by one and solve the problem. They would have done like that. But unfortunately, they are not ready for that because they are entertaining this conference that they are going to I will advise them to go through our process, it's not a reconcile, com make compromise between them. That's my advice. They were, Somalia Land was able to reconcile because they did it themselves without any outside yes. finance. The TFG is totally satisfied as long as the government the international community is financing their operation. <laughs> if we were only were financing a process yeah. that well, would have led to some, well, but, uh, but that's but not what we've we been doing. No, what? we have, unfortunately, funded the wrong process. Well, yeah, yeah what, we're what, talking about the same thing. One of our African friends uh, uh, told us there is only one who, who has been there, uh, one of the governments, stated that said there is only one Somaliland functions, and there is a system that functions. In, in, in uh, TFG, there is only one ministry that functions, and that is Minister of Finance. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, uh, Mr. President, um, uh, I'm delighted that you were able to come to the Wilson Center. We've been delighted to host you today. I, I think it's been a very useful and fruitful exchange, especially for those of us, I confess, that have been not focused on oh, Somaliland. Uh, this is very useful for me personally. Your center has a lot of information because uh, better than many people. Well, this is very Somaliland, anywhere. But my, my last intensive engagement was in the good old days of Siad Bari. I will close in just one little anecdote. It sort of reinforces your last comment. I, uh, we met with Siad Bari in 81, my first time I was in Somalia and with his entire government. We were there for several days. Uh, and six months later, the entire government met with me again, this time in my congressional office when I was chairing the Africa Subcommittee. And they were there to tell, and now they were all were dissidents. And they were there to tell me that everything they had told us six months earlier were a pack of lies. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that tradition has somewhat continued. But, uh, but thank you so much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.